I had hoped that it was, the situation would be reversed, but again, this seat doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the voters, right? And so it's what they want, not what I want. And all I have to tell them is that I just am so blessed and privileged to have had the opportunity to represent them for 10 years. I'm so proud of all the things that we got done to lift people up in this district for the last 10 years, and I wish them nothing but the best. So again, Russell Fry will face Libertarian candidates Keenan Dunham and Larry Guy Hammond, Democrat Daryl Scott. That will be in the general election in November. And Russell Fry is talking about those results, and we are going to get We're you to those remarks like right now. Sometimes we can disagree and we can get a little hot under the collar and we say harsh words. But when the primary is over, it's time to coalesce together as Republicans as one Republican family. We may not see eye to eye on everything, but always we always remember that there is more that unites us than divides us. And remember the task before us is great. We must win in November and begin to stop the liberal agenda and the radical leftists like Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and AOC. The Democrats have had their moment and their days are numbered. With complete control of the White House, the Senate, and the U.S. Congress, all they did was bring misery and despair, inflation, outrageous gas prices, baby food shortages, and foreign blunders. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for liberals to step aside once and for all and let we, the people, make it right. Yes, And I'll tell you, I, I received, this is off cuff, but I received a very gracious call from Congressman Rice earlier, and I want to thank him for that. Um, it's, in a, it's also a tradition in every election that you give thanks to everyone who made that this victory possible. But this whole room made this victory possible. It's a little like winning an award. When you start saying thanks, you're afraid that you're going to leave somebody out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name a few people tonight. For starters, I'd like to thank my lovely wife, Bronwyn Y'all remember her, she stole that show with the rice cooker ad, didn't she not? Yes, sir! Homer! I wouldn't be here tonight without you. And I appreciate your patience, your love, and you standing beside me in this incredible, crazy journey called politics. I thank you and I love you. We're going to be starting out with Horry County Council races. This is one of the biggest ones that we've been covering all night long. Horry County Council Chair. Now we're going to take a look at the runoff between incumbent Johnny Gardner and Mark Lazarus. Gardner took the seat from Lazarus back in 2018 with 99% of the precincts reporting. Lazarus is in the lead, but didn't get 50% of that vote to move on just yet. So winning with 59% of the vote, 36 year old Republican Jenna Dukes has beat out incumbent Harold Worley as the new representative for District 1. Worley has served on Horry County Council for almost two decades. And moving into District 2, incumbent Bill Howard has been re-elected with 63% of the vote over Dean Richardson. Incumbent Orton Bellamy has lost his District 7 race to Republican Tom Anderson, with Anderson taking 52% of the vote in that district. And in District 8, replacing incumbent Johnny Vaught, Republican Mikey Mash Marcerelli is in the lead, but will head to another runoff race with Brandon Skipper. And now as we move on to Horry County School Board, there will be a runoff for Horry County School Board Chairperson. David Cox and Helen Mason Smith will go head to head to see who is taking on the seat as neither one of them secured over 50% of the vote in this race. In District 2, Republican Debbie Edmonds has won the race against incumbent, incumbent Sherry Todd with Edmonds taking 53% of the vote. For Horry County Schools District 3, incumbent Tracy Winters is holding on to her seat, winning 54% of the vote. Pam Dawson has secured her spot on the November general election ballot for Horry County Schools District 6 seat. She beat her opponent Lynn Bondi, receiving 71% of the votes. Dawson will face off against Libertarian Steve Witt in November. And taking over 63% of the votes, incumbent Melanie Wellens beat opponent James Berry to continue representing District 8 for Horry County Schools. 
And in District 10, with 57% of the vote, incumbent Neil James is also holding on to his school board seat. They told me that today was one of the quietest election days that they've worked. They also told me that people and technology were mostly kind to them. They had the occasional Wi-Fi issues, but nothing too major. Now, I went to three polling locations today, and I never really saw more than 10 people voting at once, but election officials told me about 30 minutes ago that more than 51,000 people have voted in Horry County, and a lot of those are from early voting. Election day is what poll workers prepare themselves for, but today they said that it was steady, but nothing compared to previous elections. Sacosti High School had a line out the door when they first opened at 7 this morning, but workers at other locations like the, like, like the Conway Library told me that by lunchtime they were seeing fewer people walk in. The Director of Registration and Elections for Horry County, Sandy Martin, broke down the 51,310 ballots. Close to 40,000 were from today and almost 12,000 were from early voting. Now, What people don't realize is that primary is a very important election because a lot of times it determines who the candidate is going to be.